Parker. William Parker. It's a pleasure to be here Good with to you. Be here. Yep. So we are here to announce, uh, well, Sapien Secure. Absolutely. Uh, we want to know a little bit more about what Sapien Secure is, uh, how you started the company, your founders. So let's get right into introductions Absolutely. and let's start with yourself. Okay. I'm Will Parker. I'm the Chief Operating Officer of Sapien Secure. I'm a radiologist by training and I practice medicine both in BC and in California. And uh, really excited because this is Sapien Secure's launch into the US. It's a big moment for the company. Um, and uh, excited to share a few more um, uh, feature releases and also uh, projects that we're gonna be uh, doing here in the US really soon. But I'll jump over to Savas. Thank you. I'm Dr. Savas Nicolau. I'm the Chief Medical Officer of Sapien. I'm also a physician that specializes in imaging, known as a radiologist. I have over 25 years of experience in imaging. I'm also a professor of radiology, and I'm also a, um, a leading physician at one of the leading academic centers uh, within British Columbia. So, uh, Brian, tell us a little bit about yourself and your role. Hi everyone, my name is Brian and I'm the Chief Technology Officer of Sapien uh, and the current AI architect of the technologies that we use for de-identification and data categorization. Uh, I've been working in med tech for my entire career and it's, uh, it's exciting to be able to continue my contributions in this space using uh, artificial intelligence. One of the reasons I'm asking your background, uh, Dr. Savas, is, is this is a uh, is this an, isn't this a switch for you from going from such a pres, uh, prestigious uh, career, uh, medical from an ac academic standpoint and from a professional standpoint? Um, what led you into Sapien Secure? Sure, that's a great question, Scott. I, I got to be honest. I think frustration. Um, even though you know, I'm a very well accomplished uh, in, individual, you know, within the medical field, I'm a professor. You know, uh, I'm a medical lead. I have over 600 publications. I think what you realize the day to day that I love the most, the clinical work, uh, I think you become very frustrated as a physician, led to the uh, to a, a multitude of factors. One being the inefficiency of the system that, that we exist in in the medical field. And what I mean is that tons of data, large data sets that has uh, unrealized potential and uh, by unlocking the potential and the value in data, you can improve a physician's life by making them more efficient, increasing their interpretation skills, increasing their confidence, uh, improving uh, therapeutic outcomes uh, for patients where um, the mundane actually becomes exciting. Uh, it's it's that, those kind of opportunities that really have excited myself because I want to make a change. You know, uh, you know I want to be an agent of change because um, it is too frustrating presently in these systems that uh, there are so many inefficiencies uh, that uh, really restrict us in uh, realizing the full potential of being a great physician uh, within the medical field and awesome. realizing the potential in helping patients uh, you know, improve their lives. Fantastic, thank you. Well, it's really a pleasure to be here with you. And uh, I, I I should probably an, uh, mention and announce that I'm, I, yeah, I'm this not. Huge. I'm not just hosting this conversation. Um, it's been a pleasure working with you, and I am pleased to announce that I am now going to be the acting CEO. Uh, one of the opportunities I think that we have been talking about is, uh, since you are Vancouver-based, is really expanding and coming into the U.S. market. So if you could, just give us a, a, a bit of background here. Absolutely. So Savas, Brian, and myself are the founders of the company. We started it back in 2019. But even before that, as researchers, we saw the problem that existed in healthcare currently, where we have all this amazing data about patients, about disease pathology and treatment course, and yet it's locked away and it's locked away for reason. It's associated with personal health information. But we asked ourselves at the time, what if we could separate that personal health information from the core medical data and th in that form, empower that data so it can be extracted, de-identified and used for other secondary purposes. And that way accelerate advancements in healthcare. And we started Sapien Secure in 2019 
uh, for the, with that mission in mind, and we've been growing within Canada ever since. And it is uh, really exciting to now be, you know, crossing the border into the U.S. And I and I feel uh, very fortunate that we've been able to come this far, and well, we have so much more to accomplish. And thank you. And I and I, I have to ask though, what <laughs> this is quite a, artificial intelligence, machine learning hasn't been around a long time, yeah. right? And uh, being doctors by trade, uh, what where did the artificial intelligence, where did that come from? What was your inspiration? Well, I think at first, you know, at the very core of what Sapien is, we use artificial intelligence, but we're not, we don't necessarily, that's not all that we do. Um, AI is a very powerful tool, and we use that to our advantage to optimize multiple parts of our Sapien Secure platform, but um, it's, 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 a, it's not the be all and end all. And I think at the end of the day, it is the entire solution. It's both the heuristic and the artificial intelligence models that extract and de-identify data. And it's the customer service, the expertise that we have on our team that really makes um, Sapien Secure a valuable product for multiple institutions. And AI is just that strategic kind of feature set that gives us that um, uh, competitive advantage. So as Chief Technology Officer of Safety and Secure, um, tell us a little bit about your day-to-day -day role, but more importantly, tell us why this technology really matters right now. My day-to-day -day role involves uh, working with data, data extraction, um, and, and AI is a part of it, but it is in everything. Uh, what I like, when, when we think about data, uh, others may talk about unlocking data. Uh, I prefer to think about it as empowering data. Data by itself, is, it's, it's there, it, it exists. Um, but without the right tools in your arsenal, you can't really make much use of it. For us, the AI component has allowed us to take the data that's always been around, that's always been here, uh, make it more efficient, make it more powerful, make it more flexible and usable in, in more situations than uh, it was originally intended for. Uh, and so, yeah, I think that it's uh, we we've, we've grown into it. Originally, we didn't we didn't start with the intention of using AI, uh, but as we found that we needed to make that data more useful for our purposes, uh, the AI was a tool to help up to help get us there. Well, that's interesting, actually, and and I'm, I appreciate you saying that because, and as I understand, even before Sapien Secure was born, um, you were a research company. Well, we were a research group. We weren't even a company. When we first started Sapien, we were trying to solve multiple medical problems under the research lens. And I think a lot of those problems were led by Savas and, and, and the team that he has around him. And I was part of that team. And then it evolved. You know, some of the problems we were looking at solving is how do we find more answers within medical images? How do we extract more interesting conclusions about the diagnosis and treatment plans from medical imaging and, and we wanted to collect data to answer some of those questions. Um, but we realized that this was a bigger problem. This, the problems that we were having with extracting and using medical data weren't just ours. It was a problem that we saw across Canada, throughout the United States, that the conferences and the and the colleagues that we have in our network and to be frank, a great you know, around the globe. And, and so, and Dr. Savas, well, could, could you speak to that a little bit? So what was, what was your experience and, and impetus for, uh, you know, why, there, why this solution needed to be uh, developed? Sure, absolutely. Thanks, Scott. I think at the heart of it all, I think uh, the reason why we're all involved in this is to improve patients' lives. Uh, and um, there's a lot of value that is not realized uh, within data. And uh, that's why, you know, we all got involved initially and did a lot of research in this arena because we wanted to help uh, physicians, administrators, researchers, empower them um, with the data that was available. I think um, th there's a lot of data out there, but you've also got to realize the value that lies within the data if you're going to take advantage of that data and utilize it to its full potential uh, to optimize the efficiency of a researcher, to optimize the efficiency of a physician, assist a physician, uh, increase their uh, abilities in diagnosis, therapeutic uh, uh, regimens, but also increase their uh, confidence in treating patients and optimizing you know, improved outcomes for patients. 
but also helping administrators realize the, the potential uses of, of the data that exists presently to help optimize organizations and make them more efficient uh, that leads to, honestly, better patient outcomes uh, in the end. There's a lot of value in data and uh, uh, you've got to make people realize uh, that value. So uh, unlocking that value in data is uh, the key to everything from my perspective as somebody that's been involved in the system for over 25 years. And uh, that's why Sapien uh, is the leader in helping uh, unlocking uh, the potential and the value in data for a researcher, a physician, an administrator. Uh, I think uh, there's a lot of power there. Wonderful. And, and you, you brought up, well, brought up several really wonderful points there. And I have to speak to, to uh, Dr. Parker now on this one. So I understand, and you've helped educate me on this, that mm -hmm. the industry is really still in a, in a very archaic, almost Absolutely. legacy system. I mean, yeah. can, describe that for us for a moment. Well, this, it's part of why we decided to shift gears back in 2019 and, and form this company. It's bringing, you know, part of our mission is bringing healthcare into the 21st century. You know, you have similar parallel um, industries, you know, financial technology, you know, bookings for airline and, and, and logistics for, you know, moving packages around the globe. And these are partially automated systems with all these advanced, you know, robotic systems that get jobs done. And then you turn to healthcare, one of the most important aspects of our society, and we're still using paper. And we just stop and think, you know, what, <laughs> like, what is going on here? And, 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 and that paper is what is getting information within a hospital for life-saving treatments to one physician to another or ordering, you know, medications or whatever. Um, yeah, it needed to change. The, the major focus for why, where, where Sapien is solving problems is in data management, the infrastructure of the healthcare enterprise. You know, moving data around, making sure we're optimizing the extraction and use of data, creating systems that optimize for weightless management, get patients in to be seen quicker, systems that optimize for billing so that support staff, nurses, physicians are being remunerated properly for the great work that they do on the front lines. Um, systems that allow for the ingestion of medical, personal medical information and de-identified medical information so that it's properly stored and managed so that we can draw from it and great, make great conclusions uh, and uh, predictions. So, you know, privacy, mm -hmm. security, um, it's at the top of everyone's mind. And, and this is gonna be uh, obviously in the, in the times that we live in today, Right, it's at the top of people's agenda in Absolutely. regards to you know how do we protect personal data. Mm -hmm. So um, walk us through the system, like what what is the and, and whether it's yourself or Brian, like walk us through how that's done. Sapien Secure at its core was built on a foundation of de-identification, and so the reason for that was because when we started it, the institutions that restricted our access to data said to us, listen you know, Dr. Parker, Dr. Nicolau, you have to properly de-identify data. And you can't just tell us that you're de-identifying data, you have to prove it to us. And so then we went back, and, and, and the reason for that was because we wanted to be able to use this data to do great things, to solve medical problems, right? And at the foundation of privacy is you need to remove personal health information. You mm -hmm. need to make it so that you, patients are, their privacy isn't compromised for the secondary use of data. So we went back, um, Savas, myself, Brian worked together, built Sapien Secure, and at the time it was just basic command line code that ingested, ingested medical images, reports, uh, tabular data, such as rows and columns of medical numbers, and removed personal health information. Um, and what that is, at a very basic level, the, the FDA outlines 18 attributes that qualifies uh, for personal health information. Um, so that was the basic level. That was the absolute mm -hmm. you know, minimum we had to do. But as we got into this and understood what it meant to actually become private, like what does that mean when you get into mm -hmm. the complexities of it? Yeah. It became a lot more complicated. And so we built a lot of features into Sapien Secure to get into the nuance of what does it actually mean to de-identify? When it comes to privacy laws, 
uh, you know, HIPAA in the U.S. and GDPR in, mm -hmm. in Europe. Um, where does safety and secure stack in, uh, let's say, with the competitive set of, you know, do you have to under, how much do you have to understand? Um, how much do you have to uh, adhere to? Well, it's absolutely non-starter. Safety and secure from the get-go, whether it's PIPEDA in Canada, HIPAA, or GDPR and other jurisdictions, there's over 100 around the world that we would have to follow in line with. And you know, as we grow, we'll have to engage with all of them. Um, it, 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 most of these regulatory guidelines are actually kind of the minimum. And as an organization that's focused on privacy, that minimum isn't even on our radar because we're going way beyond that. We're mm -hmm. focusing in on de-identifying so that we build in algorithmic assessments of the risk of an organization to a persecutor coming in to try to find out who someone is. And we give them those risk assessments in order to, to, to alleviate the, the burden that's on these privacy uh, groups in health organizations. Because you can imagine these groups within a hospital, they're trying to decide which groups should have access to medical data, which groups shouldn't, um, who's doing it well, who's not. It's a very challenging job. And so we want organizations to turn to Sapien and say, you know what, we trust that organization. Mm -hmm. They're the healthcare privacy organization. And, and, it, um, and, and that simplifies the decision-making process. They don't have to, that decision to allow data to be accessed uh, becomes a lot easier. And, and so once that data is accessed and, and it's properly secured, right? yeah. properly de-identified, um, so how do you help these organizations at this point? How do we get to say now, um, help these Absolutely. organizations at this point, yeah. um, monetize that data? Is that something that they do automatically, they do on their own, or are we helping them to uh, move that well, this ball is, forward? This is absolutely where the Sapien Connect platform comes in. And this is kind of one of the big releases that we're, we're, we're starting you know, this quarter is around setting up a software uh, platform that allows for an organization to decide how they want to monetize this data. Um, whether they want to extract and de-identify medical data in order to share it with a um, uh, industrial partner where they can create it. This industrial partner can create a new product, maybe a new CT scanner, maybe a new drug. Um, or if they want to, if, and that's one potential Sapien Connect um, um, module that we do for our customers already. Um, but other organizations may not want that. Maybe they want to create internal audits or dashboards, analytics on how the efficient, how their, their internal efficiencies are doing and how they can improve. Maybe they want to improve the remuneration for their physicians and extract and de-identify data to assess how physicians are being paid, how nurses are being paid, how to optimize for that to ensure that everyone's being paid fairly. I mean, wh where do you foresee this uh, in three years, five years? I mean, are, are you, I, I know you really are passionate about this. I mean, do you see your Sapien Secure being able to influence the system? Absolutely. I think, I think when you get down, to, when you, we've positioned ourselves so that um, institutions know what to expect. We're creating a standard for data extraction and DID. And when you get to a certain size where people are looking to you for guidance, because we've created that standard, it's guidance far beyond what FDA or other regulatory approval agencies have set. So we know that they, the, our customers know that they can trust us. Um, that, you know, that's a position where you can make massive differences in the health system. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. And Brian, I, I've heard you speak to this. Um, one of the reasons you actually got into this uh, you know, it's just really how you are wanting to advance how hospitals and, and organizations in the industry at large um, uh, are with their, their technology. I mean, speak to that, if you will. You know, the technology is constantly advancing and, and things don't advance at the same rate. And so, of course, you're going to have certain groups that adopt technology while other groups don't. And then maybe when they finally do um, you know, it's the, it's a, net, a, a new generation of that technology. And what you end up with is you end up with a fractured uh, community that is utilizing technology in different ways. Um, and it's not interoperable. And I think the, the best thing that we bring to the table is a way to unify a lot of the sort of back end IT systems. Um, this is a way to sort of get everyone back on board, back on the same train. 
uh, and thinking about data, thinking about privacy and security in the same way. Like uh, Google is the search engine uh, global. Search engine is Google. I think uh, Sapien uh, is the data management engine uh, globally. Uh, you know, I want to see Sapien uh, be that um, solution for all institutions that can uh, realize and unlock the value of the data that can improve and make institutions more efficient, reduce costs for institutions, and ultimately improve uh, patient outcomes uh, is, is, is the vision that I have. With all the advancements in, in healthcare and science, um, again, I think we mentioned in the very early uh, part of this is the, the genome, mm -hmm. right? Biotechnology. Um, how does this help advance the medical industry overall? I think a lot of what you know, Savas is saying here with respect to automating diagnosis, automating treatment, you need an infrastructure that makes medical data ubiquitous. In order to empower, in order for us as an organization to empower other great health organizations who are building treatments and technology of the healthcare future, the data doesn't, shouldn't be so hard to access. If, if, if you use a parallel to other industries where, um, you know, like for financial tech or, or um, you know, legal, data is much more accessible. And so those industries are just, when you look at the technology in those industries, they're farther ahead. Mm -hmm. um, we want to get healthcare to a place where data is ubiquitous. All types of treatment and diagnostic data is ubiquitous, and then the innovations can follow. Right, and we talked about this too, um, how technologies have really advanced uh, the financial industry, right, and fintech, and, and what's happening with, with you know, Web3 and these new technologies. Um, and yet healthcare is still, right, is still in this archaic legacy stage. Um, so where can Sapien Secure uh, really be that change agent? And, and, and it's, I hear interoperability, it's, I hear scalability, but where, where are we the change agents? Well, it's, it, the industry is already changing. You know, we've got through a pandemic by creating a vaccine in record time. And so, you know, there is a lot of technology and innovation in healthcare. That's not, that's not, you know, um, you know, portray the position of healthcare incorrectly. It's just that it's, the industry is hungry for data in order mm -hmm. to solve these problems and that data isn't available. And so where, where Sapien fits in is it's in the middle. It's connecting and creating revenue streams and opportunities and value where healthcare institutions have data to the very hungry industry players that are ready to innovate but don't have access to that data. Okay, um, very, very quickly, give me a couple examples where uh, you know, you've worked with clients, partners, mm -hmm. and, and you've really delivered uh, value right in their minds. And, and so give us a couple quick examples of, of client work that, that you can share. Absolutely, so um, we've created for our first US customer, uh, we created a, a de-identification node uh, where they could send all of their medical data to one central node that then processed, de-identified it, and prepared it for them to use for innovation and improvements to their clinical issues. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was that was a, um, an amazing partnership. We worked with AWS to um, send Sapien Secure as a software package to multiple institutions around the world so that they could share data with AWS and. Uh, AI models could be created. And oh, that that, that was actually a, a, a project early in the pandemic, right? Early was that pandemic. something around the COVID nineteen discoveries? Absolutely, it was part of imaging of the lungs in COVID nineteen. We wanted to get medical imaging data, make medical imaging data more ubiquitous, so that the the uh, the, the AI developers um, and um, and the companies that produce these models could have access to it and create models to. To, 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 um, to answer diagnostic questions around uh, COVID-19. And so we collected data for them and they've been creating models ever since. One unique opportunity was through Siemens uh, Health and Ears. I think they wanted to develop a model uh, for the brain in predicting stroke and also predicting who would bleed from a stroke, which can lead to catastrophic uh, you know, outcomes for patients. 
and they needed 100,000 uh, imaging studies of the brain. And uh, thanks to Brian and Will, uh, these two great individuals, these great intellectual minds, we were able to uh, use Sapien and its uh, great uh, tools to be able to uh, optimize, sanitize, prep, and extract the data for Siemens within a week. And that led to some great algorithms that Siemens had developed and actually shared with our institution that we utilize presently in helping us uh, you know, optimize therapeutic regimens for patients uh, that suffer from stroke. And we've, often, we've talked a lot about de-identification. What's the difference, if there is one, between de-identification and... De-identification means that you're removing personal information on a spectrum of, on one end, completely identifiable, to on the other end, completely anonymous. And so anonymous is one spectrum of de-identification. Anonymized data has no intrinsic information about an individual. And in the reality of medical information, it's almost useless data. You know, if you remove all of the contextual information, even if it's indirectly identifiable from a patient record, um, now you have nothing left to actually use for drug discovery, for creating new products in healthcare, et cetera, et cetera. We've been talking a lot about Sapien Secure. Sapien Secure has many elements to it, uh, but one thing we haven't really touched on a lot is the Sapien Connect platform, right? Mm -hmm. So what is the Sapien Connect platform? Sapien Connect is the platform that gives our customers options to monetize. So if our customers have challenges with inefficiencies in a department, we can either build apps for that department or our customers can use their IT departments or contract developers to build apps to increase efficiencies that plug in to the Sapien Connect platform, which is connected to the data extraction and DID pipeline. So that's great, thank you. Now give us an example, perhaps a client example, of where this was used or where this was, where the difference between did we build it or did they build it or was it a collaboration? Well, we've done both. Um, you know, as we grow, it's becoming more and more of a they build it and we provide the platform. But earlier on, we build most of them. We build both of the applets. One of the big ones that we're very proud of is our weightless optimization applet for uh, in particular, medical imaging wait lists, but this can be applied to surgical wait lists, etc. Uh, with respect to automatically aggregating and ingesting data for re requests for these services like medical imaging, creating an automated priority scoring system, priority meaning who needs to be seen first versus who needs to be seen later, building that into a pipeline that sends that data to the scheduler so they can schedule patients in an efficient manner. Hmm. And we did that with one of our customers and, and it's been quite a success. And is that, is that new to the industry? Is that uh, something it, unique to them? It is, it is absolutely, uh, um, and it's foundationally different than any other system in healthcare in that it automates the data management of these systems. Most scheduling, and waitlist tools in healthcare are very manual. They need mm. a lot of human engagement and Sapien decreases that. Describe the ideal customer. Our customers own data, they own health data. And if you own health data, you are intrinsically burdened with the struggles of the inefficiencies of the current health system and we can help you automate many processes in your system. Thank and that's you. our perfect customer. Okay, so you own your own data. Yeah. So what can we do for customers that maybe don't own their own data? Is there is there a different path? Absolutely. So if you're a, if you're an industry partner that is looking for access to data to improve your technology, to improve drug discovery or drug optimization, um, you know, Sapien is a very powerful strategic partner because we are integrated into multiple health systems, and so you can through us get access to data by, uh, facil by Sapien facilitating those partnerships. Okay, so that's um, uh, channel partners Absolutely. or monetization partners. Okay, mm -hmm. so, um, and that actually goes back to, I think what we were speaking to in regards uh, 
um, to not having to have too much lift on the client, mm -hmm. right? Where we've helped them to uh, essentially uh, extract and unlock the value of that data. And now we can even help them sell it, yeah. monetize it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think there is the monetization of, of medical data has so many benefits for system improvement and to be honest with you, patient care. And that's really where we focus is how do we support organizations to monetize data so that they can bring it back and improve the system that they're, they're currently engaged in. Why would I hire Sapien Secure? I think the, what we bring is, an ex, is a wealth of experience and understanding of this industry. Um, if you bring anyone, there, I'm, there are plenty of very experienced, very talented developers out there, but what they're lacking in is understanding or a deep understanding of this industry um, and having worked in it before, knowing what is uh, dangerous to leave in a medical image, knowing, uh, e even being able to understand medical images, right? Uh, us bringing that expertise on board and creating a, a, a system that is consistent um, and, and used by other people means that you have peace of mind when you use our services. Mm, thank you. Thank you. Dr. Nikolai. Sapien is validated, tested, trusted, transparent, exemplary. Particularly if you're looking for a game changer, you go with Sapien uh, in, in the industry of uh, data management, data utilization, data privacy, data security, and also understanding the value of data. I don't think there are, going back to Brian's comment, standard forms to value medical data. I think it's, it is the Wild West in the context of what value is there within the data. In, we know it's very valuable. We know it can improve the system and create these new products and, and uh, new drugs, help to create new drugs and opportunities for care. But we don't know exactly in what context, when is it really very valuable. And so what can Sapien do to help organizations when they're struggling with this problem? Well, we, we bring in a very transparent pricing model in the context of the more volume that you extract in DID, the less per, volume, per record cost there is. And it's very predictable. And so as you build this into the, the, your, your, your operational costs, you can create a new revenue stream for your institution by understanding we need to find enough partners to want to use this data to get it to a certain X. And we know at that X, we're going to have Y as a revenue or as a, as a profit off of that. And so it's creating these um, opportunities for organizations to get new revenues in, especially in times like this, where we're going into a recession. So we talked quite a bit about safety and secure um, and, and the de-identification process. Um, talk a little, a little bit about Sapien Connect for us, because this is really the monetization side of it, correct? Absolutely. So Sapien Connect is the API integration aspect of our software that allows our customers to create new revenue and value from the ability to extract and de-identify data so quickly. Um, it, is, it is really the monetization channel. In the name, I mean, I think everyone's going to assume that it's about connecting uh, our customers to their data, but I think it's a lot more than that. I think it's, in a way, it's almost connecting our customers to a, a bank of medical intuition and knowledge. Um, the, with the tools that we've developed, our ability to categorize and sort data and provide it to them uh, in intelligent ways allows them to take the existing uh, tools and developers uh, and staff that they may have and make way more use of them. You know, they have this data locked away. It's locked. They can't do anything with it. They need something like our system to get it out. We're bar none the best out there and there's not many systems that actually do that, right? right. So if we can get the data out, de-identified, and then create new revenue streams such as data monetization, data sharing, dashboards, analytics, workflow optimization, weightless management, weightless decreasing, billing optimization, all things that we do already for our customers, this is gonna allow our customers to become, get through this recession. This isn't, you know, when we, talk, when we talk about the support staff in a hospital, it is under unbelievable constraints right now. And systems like Safety and Secure can really, really help. You know, Savas, 
you know, being in the department, you're a department head of a major hospital, but you know you have your finger on the pulse with respect to this problem. How does Safe and Secure help? Yeah, it's an interesting uh, question and an interesting uh, problem, William. I think what's happened, you know, uh, within Canada and the U.S., and also globally, I think, uh, uh, due to the effects of COVID, uh, we've realized there's a lot of uh, people that are just not happy being within the healthcare system. And for numerous reasons, I think everyone in healthcare is feeling uh, burnout and that creates problems in attracting people to uh, be within healthcare, but also retaining people within healthcare. And the some of the biggest issues that are facing any institution, uh, uh, particularly healthcare, is being able to attract and keep employees. And that's a big issue, as you have mentioned. Now, from a hospital perspective, what does that mean? That means less clerical staff, means less technical staff, less nursing staff, uh, less clinicians. So already limited resources are becoming even more limited. So then you have to maximize the potential uh, of these limited resources for maximum output. From a internal standpoint, right, inside the organization, whether it be a hospital or like the clinics or, or whomever it might be that you're working with, what type of resource is required from them? So, you know, once uh, 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 our software, our application is, is in, in installed on-prem, right? What type of resource is required on their, on their behalf? Well, you know, I can answer this one, Savas. I think the, the ma it, it's, a, it's a low lift. You know, we have an amazing customer service component to our software. You know, Brian and the team are constantly engaging with the IT departments and the institutions that we partner with. And we, we, we make that lift extremely low. And we actually create a, a, a system where institutions can actually completely hand off the IT component to our software to us. And we can just be contracted to support it. And we can do all of that for our customer or, mm -hmm. or if they want to manage it completely, then we, we can train and teach their IT department to manage the software for themselves. So there's a level. It's, it's, Absolutely. A, it, it's um, a level at which they can afford or a level at which they can support, but they don't have to. Many institutions across the US and Canada still use fax as a referral. Some of the best institutions, the, the, the ones that you hear about as the, the reputation setting institutions, um, standard setting institutions, they still use fax. Fax requires someone to collect that piece of paper or that's printed or at least digitally ingested at the other end and then manually transcribe the data that's on that fax into the system so the patient can be scheduled, uh, they can be put into the wait list, uh, you know, medications can be properly organized and ordered for the patient. Um, well, what Sapien does is we understand that that's an infrastructure limitation. And we've created our OCR, our optical character recognition software that integrates into the HL7 standard of institutions, health institutions, so that all of that manual transcribing of forms can be automated, digitized, and, and we can decrease the labor on the workforce. So they mm. can be focused on other things, making their jobs more valuable, making it easy to retain th those staff. So that's just one example. And it's, it's, great it's, example. it's, it's, um, it's, um, you know, it's, it's, it's changing the game. I, ha I think about right when, when, uh, you talk about personal identifiable information, PHI, mm -hmm. um, you also, you, you, at least I would immediately go to drug discoveries or, um, you know, certainly we can do that, right? Mm -hmm. Advancements in, in medical science. Um, but we often don't think about the behind the scenes, right? The, the infrastructure, yeah, you're speaking to things like billing and mm -hmm. coding and, right? I mean, it, it, it's how, how big of an opportunity is that it's for hospitals? It's massive. It's on the order internationally of over two trillion. You know, the, the, the inefficiencies in healthcare are kind of, they start from needing to take care of a patient at the bedside. And then you step back from that and you say, okay, I need a nurse and a doctor. And then you step back from that and then I need support staff to make sure the doctor and the nurse are scheduled properly. So you need scheduling clerks. Then you step back from there, you need to make sure all of this team is being supported by HR and, 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 and billings. You need to make sure medications, 
you know, you know, support staff in the hospital being uh, properly scheduled, properly um, uh, integrated into the flow. You need to make sure that um, the infrastructure in the hospital from respect of efficiency perspective, if there was a natural disaster or some sort of emergency, that all of these pieces are, are interacting and, and functioning properly. And if you're running all this complicated system that has multiple moving pieces off of paper, and even if you're in a system where we're moving towards an electronic medical record system where there are some digital components, but we all know the reality of the health system today, there's still a lot of manual human processes. Where Sapien fits mm -hmm. in is if you have a manual process that, um, that slows down and, 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 and the operations and the efficiency of the operation, Sapien can likely increase that efficiency and auto automate that. And that's, that's our positioning. We are infrastructure for health systems and optimizing that efficiency for the infrastructure. I mean, there's, there's so much that I've learned, right, from what Sapien Secure does on so many levels uh, and helping so many different unique uh, client problems, right, solving those problems. So how do, you, how do you work with a client? So walk us through, um, you know, how do you discover what their needs are and, and how do we serve those? Uh, depending on which hospital you go to and depending on which department in which hospital you go to, uh, there's a different method for which they tackle uh, the way they want to acquire the data, the way they store their data, the way they, uh, and the way they de-identify it. And so for us, uh, one of the things that we aim to do is to standardize that process. We want to be the de facto standard for how you extract data, how you uh, categorize it, how you, and then proceed to de-identify it. Um, and by creating a standardized process, that makes it easier for us to approach uh, these organizations that have the data. Um, everyone has, everyone is storing their data in different ways. And, and the reality is that that's never going to be a, a problem that is going to go away. And so what we want to do is we create a unified platform for which the hospitals can access their data through a single unified API. We work with hospitals to find out what the sources of their data are, connect it to a single point, and then we give them access uh, through a single command that allows them to aggregate their data. That's wonderful. Thank you. And, and I also I want to point out too, one of the, the differentiators mm -hmm. that I understand is in doing so, um, you actually place the Sapien Secure software, it's called on-prem, right? So everything happens inside the organization, not yeah. outside. Yeah. So walk us through why that's important. What's the difference of yeah. on-prem versus in cloud and why does it matter? The cloud is an amazing environment to host software because it removes the, the um, need to be in one place. You can be anywhere. But that's when you start thinking about the use of medical, personal medical information, that's no longer a great use case in, in and of itself because you don't want someone's personal information everywhere. Right. You want it to be controlled. And so we've placed safe and secure in the on-prem first philosophy because we understand that hospitals do want to restrict that access and if we leave it in their house we let them take the software and manage it with their IT departments then they are in control and they feel better about the management of their own data we also offer um, cloud support and so we can play safe and secure in the cloud if a customer wishes but most of our customers want it on-prem all right gentlemen I, I want to uh, steer the questions a little bit toward uh, not just the launch in the US but the, uh, I know that we are going out for uh, an investment round. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about that. Um, what are we asking? What's mm -hmm. the purpose, the use of proceed? Uh, I wanna actually dig a little bit deeper into uh, the fact that, I mean, you're already revenue positive. You're a startup. Yeah. You're revenue positive. Yeah. Why do you need the capital? There's a few reasons why we need capital at this stage. Um, Sapien is a default alive company. And what that means is we've bootstrapped our way from zero to a revenue producing company with product. Uh, and we pay for our staff with that, without any debt, without any previous investment. And we can continue to do it at this rate and grow at a slow pace. But there are a couple of reasons why that's not acceptable to us. 
I think first and foremost, we need to grow faster so we can do more great things for healthcare and become more integrated into multiple health systems. And why do we want to do that? Well, we first believe, as Brian alluded, that it's the Wild West right now with respect to patient data privacy. There's no standard, and we want to be the first to create that standard. And that will really set the stage for, um, you know, just the market. You know, we're going to be leading into a new market and creating new revenue opportunities for these healthcare institutions. And we want to be fast to do that. We don't want to take our time. Um, second, healthcare doesn't move as quickly as some other industries. It's a slow moving system. And part of that is because it's safe. You want to have a safe system. You don't want to make too quick decisions about certain infrastructure problems. And that's what we're focusing on. And so the onboarding of customers requires that careful engagement to earn trust and Having an, uh, an investment round to support that careful engagement will really improve our relationships with our customers, give us the time to onboard them, create that stickiness, and accelerate. Being, ex yeah, exactly. It's accelerating growth. Absolutely. It's instead of slowly growing at this point, if we can get some investment capital to support multiple onboarding of institutions through the through the process of er earning their trust, we are going to be in a very different place in in, in just three to five years. So let's talk a little bit about uh, your first customer in the U.S. It's a bit of an announcement, right? Absolutely. So, uh, We're very excited about it. Synthesis is your, is your first U.S. customer. Walk us through the difference. Like what, your business has primarily been in Canada, Yes. right? What's the fundamental difference in being in the U.S. and, and why is that important? It's just bigger in every way. And it's, it's bigger because the, the systems are bigger. There's more patience. There's more funding. There's more data. Um, there's, in almost every way, the U.S. is a massive um, opportunity and also a massive challenge. I really appreciate not only the opportunity for me because I've I've really learned so much uh, from you. Um, I am thrilled. I'm again, as I said, I'm I'm kind of a uh, technical geek, geek at heart, <laughs> and I am just thrilled with what you've been able to do and the advancements you've been able to make, and and really the difference you've been able to make with with, with your clients and and with your partners. So I wanted to just take a moment and say thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate your time. Thanks. Scott. And if anyone uh, has any questions, obviously sapiensecure.io. Um, you can also go to sapienml.com, but in the U.S., sapiensecure.io. And uh, we welcome your input and, and thank you again.